Perfect. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today with Jennifer Robles from Cal State Fullerton. Um, today, she's going to be going over the different pathways to teaching and the specific majors available at Cal State Fullerton for uh, teaching pathways. So Jennifer, thank you, and I'll let you take it away. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, so as you mentioned, my name is Jennifer Robles. I'm from Cal State Fullerton. I work in the Center for Careers and Teaching or actually the full name is Schools First Federal Credit Union Center for Careers and Teaching. I'm the Transfer Student Support Coordinator, so I advise students here at Cal State Fullerton, but I also um, work with future teachers who want to transfer to Cal State Fullerton from the community colleges. I think I hid the wrong slide. I had an agenda slide here, but um, since I accidentally hit the one, I must, oops. So um, let me give you an agenda for today then. So today I'm gonna cover transfer information, um, just the general stuff, and then we'll dig into the teacher pathway. So some of the things you'd wanna know now, including like recommended majors, um, programming at Cal State Fullerton for future teachers, um, and just also some high need areas for future teachers as you're starting to consider maybe what pathway you wanna take. So we'll cover it all. And I do plan on sharing this presentation. So don't worry about rushing to take notes. Um, I will send it your way so you can catch some of the things I'm sharing. And I try and um, share some QR codes and links throughout so you can get the information. So um, I'm gonna jump right into transfer information. Oh, I just got switched. Here's my agenda. I think, oops. Okay. And then we will have time for a Q&A at the end actually. So let's jump into transfer information. So I have some screenshots here so you can see exactly where to find it uh, when you go to our website. I, I'll admit our website can be a little tricky to navigate, um, but what you wanna do is you wanna find this prospective students tab right at the top of the Cal State Fullerton homepage. Once there, you'll wanna click on transfer at the top, and then it's gonna take you to this page that has a really, um, great amount of information here that is all you'll need to know about transferring. So admissions requirements are here, all the deadlines, there's a checklist for you, a link to financial aid is there, and then we have a transfer center too. So you, of course, should connect with your transfer center at your community college, but if you have specific Cal State Fullerton questions um, related to the application or um, just, you know, anything that might come up while you're working on that Cal State Apply application, you can reach out to our transfer center too. And so we have um, a current application deadline in progress right now for fall 24. So for those of you who are ready to transfer, it opened up on October 1st and will go until November 30th, 2023. Um, if you are not ready to transfer yet and maybe you're thinking about spring 2025, that would be August 1st through August 31st, 2024 for a start date in January for spring 2025. So I did include the QR code here. So if you're watching this on your laptop, you can pull out your phone and scan the QR to save this page. But yeah, a lot of great information to check out here. I'm going to go over a little bit in particular um, the admissions requirements. So let's talk about that right now. So transferring to Cal State Fullerton. So transfer students, they must meet minimum eligibility requirements, which you're going to see on the next page. Um, and if you're someone transferring or planning to transfer for fall 2024, all your admissions requirements must be complete by spring 2024, including your ABT if applicable. So I've included the link um, here that has more information. And I've pulled this all from that admissions requirement page that I shared with you. So this is what they're looking for when you transfer to Cal State Fullerton, that you've earned your 60 transferable units, you complete 10 GE courses or 30 semester units with a grade of C minus or better, including your gold and four classes. So that's your A1 oral comm, A2 written comm, A3 critical thinking, and your B4, which is your math course. And then you must earn a qualifying GPA and be in good standing with your last college. So the GPA, you may have noticed there isn't one actually listed here, and that's because the GPA is determined by the pool of applicants we receive. So um, don't know what the GPA will be for our upcoming terms, but um, it is considered when you apply to uh, Cal State Fullerton. So again, I've linked to the admissions page here that has this information and a little bit more than what I've shared here too for you to look back on later. 
And then now I'm going to jump into the center and what I do at Cal State Fullerton for future teachers. So as I mentioned, I'm from the school's first federal credit union center for careers and teaching, a long name. Um, I will refer to this as the center for careers and teaching going forward. Um, but we're located in the education classroom building on the third floor. We're like a study space for future teachers. So you'll find desks and computers in there, um, coffee and, um, you know, a place to take a break or study between classes. All of our advisors are up there on the third floor, too, um, for you to, to meet with us. And um, here at the Center for Careers and Teaching, we provide GE and teacher pathway advising. You'll also have an advisor for your major. Too. So it'll be a little bit different than your experience at your community college where you see an advisor that can help you with everything, basically. You'll have a couple of resources here, and our main focus will be helping you academic plan for your pathway of becoming a teacher. And so um, the information that we have is uh, you know, current California teacher preparation requirements, as well as specific teacher preparation requirements for getting into Cal State Fuller to this credential program. So um, if you want to learn a little bit more about the Center for Careers and Teaching, see the types of resources we provide. Um, a good way to get a glance into that is to follow our Instagram account. We're pretty active on our social media with regular posts daily. It's at CSUF underscore CCT. And then here's some of the programming that you would be able to participate in as a future teacher here at Cal State Fullerton. So we do have our community of future educators called Titan Future Teachers. You'll learn in the upcoming slides that you can be any major to be a teacher. There's not one single pathway. Um, so this is your way to build your community. So um, we do professional development um, usually every week or sometimes every other week, um, but it's a chance for you to gain some more knowledge to help prepare you for your pathway to the credential program, but also begin to network with fellow future teachers and build your community. There's an application process to get into TFT, and we usually launch that that summer before the fall starts. Um, so be on the lookout for that if you're planning to apply and you're admitted to Cal State Fullerton. This is a great way to get connected to other future teachers and just get more information. And so if you, again, would like to see more about TFT and the types of things and activities we do, um, follow us on Instagram because we have a lot of good information there to get a glance at to what this programming looks like. We also have programming specifically for men of color. It's called Men of Color in Education. And this is a community for Black and Latino males who are wanting to be future educators. So um, there's not many men of color in education, and that's something that we want to change and so we want to support this group as they um, are on their pathway to teaching so like tft they do workshops also that are centered around um professional development they're actually called hangouts they're a little you know informal but formal so you're getting some teacher prep information but also just connecting with your peers um, so again, there's an Instagram account at mce underscore csuf. So if you're curious about to learn more about this programming, um, so yeah, take a look at that. And then lastly, um, those two programs are run by a Center for Careers and Teaching staff, but we also have a student org or a club on campus called uh, SCTA or the Student California Teaching Association or Teachers Association, excuse me. Um, you might have something similar to this on your campus. Um, so if you enjoy that, uh, if you come to Cal State Fullerton, you'll have that opportunity to continue on in this club. Um, I advise this club, actually. It's a great group of students, and um, they do community service. They do professional development type work, too, and they're all future teachers. It's all student-run. They create the activities and the programming for this. Um, so if this is something you're interested in participating in, it's like another great way to meet people too, especially as a transfer student, and you know, it's kind of challenging to start fresh on a new campus and meet people. This is definitely one of those good ways to do it and just get more teacher prep information, which is always nice. So they have an Instagram account too, you can check out. Um, and then again, uh, there's usually something called Discover Fest. That's actually what these pictures are from here on the slide. So if you're a new student, they do a day where all the student orgs come out where you can meet with them and sign up and decide if you want to participate. But yeah, lots of ways to get involved as a future teacher at Cal State Fullerton and a lot of ways to be supported as a future teacher.
All right, so now let's dig into the pathway to teaching and how you can prepare now. So to begin, I want to point out some important things to know, three things actually. So one, there's not a teaching major or an education major at Cal State Fullerton. To earn your credential at Cal State Fullerton, it's going to be a post-baccalaureate program. So that means you have to earn your bachelor's degree first, and then you can complete your credential program, which is a year-long program. And then the Center for Careers and Teaching, we're the undergraduate advising center for all the future teachers at Cal State Fullerton. So no matter what your major is, if you decide you want to become a teacher, you would want to find us on campus to, to assist you. So in California, these are the three things that a teacher needs, or not three things, but the two things you will need, I should say. So you need your bachelor's degree, and that bachelor's degree can be in any major. And you also need your credential, and the credential is what certifies you to teach. And there's different types of credentials depending on what you want to teach. And with these two things, bachelor's degree, credential, you can teach in California. So now we're going to break this down a little bit further. This is a really simplified pathway to becoming a teacher. So what is the teaching credential program? So as I mentioned, it's what certifies a person to teach. It's a post-baccalaureate program. So here at Cal State Fullerton, we don't have any programs that blend your bachelor's and your credential together. You'll have to complete your degree first. The credential program is approximately one year or two semesters long. It's very much a full-time commitment, but the pro is that you're gonna finish pretty quickly in two semesters. So it's gonna include your student teaching and it focuses on pedagogy, which is the study of how to teach. So you'll enter the program having satisfied a requirement to show you know your subject. You're gonna learn how to teach that subject while you're in the credential program. And so these are the three different credentials we offer at Cal State Fullerton. We have a multiple subject credential program, and a person who holds this credential can teach TK through eighth grade, all content areas. So that's basically elementary school. We have a single subject credential program. And so this would allow the person that holds this credential to teach a specific subject named under that credential. And typically that's for middle and high school. And then we also have a special education credential program, and we have specialty areas you can um, choose uh, if you do this credential. So early childhood special education, mild, moderate special education, and extensive support special education. And you can teach ages birth through age 22 with your special ed credential. And I will dig into these different specialty areas and spend in, in a little bit too. So I said earlier how there isn't actually a teaching major or an education major. So you might be wondering, well, what, what do I choose? So here at Cal State Fullerton, we do have some recommendations based on what you want to earn your credential in. And so we'll start with multiple subject here. So again, that's for those of you who might be interested in teaching elementary. We actually have three majors that have an elementary concentration or emphasis, and that's child and adolescent studies, liberal studies and human services. If you're someone who wants to teach middle and high school and uh, pursue a single subject, your best bet is to choose a major that aligns with your future subject. So if you wanna teach English, major in English. If you wanna teach math, major in math. Um, it's gonna help you meet a big requirement in the long run as well too, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then when it comes to special education, um, these recommendations are basically the same. If you wanna do elementary within a SPED classroom, we still recommend those three majors under multiple subjects. So child and adolescent studies, local studies, human services. If you wanna do a single subject for SPED, major in that subject. We actually don't have a special education major either. So I wanted to point that out too. And so your special education training will start with some prerequisite courses you do for the credential program and then during the credential program itself. So this is good to know because um, if any of you are getting ready to apply and have started an application, you know they're going to ask you to declare a major. So it's good to know these options ahead of time so you can have you know, the appropriate major on your application. A good way to explore these further is um, using our university catalog. It's linked down here below. There's a degree program section where you can see a list of every major we have at Cal State Fullerton, and you can read a little bit more about them because it shows the courses that you take for each of them. So 
these are just recommendations. You can major in anything that you want to become a teacher, but these are really great choices that will help you meet some requirements later on too. So um, that's why they're recommended for you. I also want to point out high need areas in teachers uh, and teaching, excuse me, as you're maybe starting to think what you'd like to teach um, or maybe you're undecided still. And so a couple of these areas I wanted to point out are math and science. We don't see that many students pursuing these subject areas and we really do need more math and science teachers, STEM in general. We see a lot of single subject students pursuing English and social science, but not a lot of math and science. Um, so if you have any interest there, um, it's definitely an in-demand area. Also special education, we definitely need more special ed teachers. The jobs are out there. Um, and so if you have an interest or you've had experience working in special ed, this is a great credential to, to, to pursue. It's an area that we need. And also for those of you who are bilingual, um, more and more classrooms are becoming um, dual immersion or bilingual classrooms. And so they're looking for um, teachers who have their bilingual author authorization. Um, and what a bilingual authorization is, is um, an authorization that will certify you to teach your content in both English and another uh, language. So we'll co um, cover that a little bit more in the upcoming slides. So um, with special education, I uh, wanted to highlight that it's a really um, impactful job. Special education teachers are uniquely trained to support and impact students with disabilities and learning disorders and developmental delays. And so working in special education allows you to make an impact on students by providing them with tools and resources to help them find the best way to learn that suits their needs. So just wanted to point that out because I feel like a lot of students maybe don't understand or maybe think of the most severe version of what a special ed classroom might look like, um, but it can be very rewarding. And I mentioned how there's different special ed education, um, I guess, concentration or program plans you can follow. So um, I listed uh, what type of work you would do with this type of credential on here. It's on our website too for special education. I don't think I linked it here, but I should have, but um, definitely take a look through this and see what your options are if you're interested in SPED. And I mentioned earlier how math and science are high need areas. So you can, of course, pursue a single subject in math, and that math credential will allow you to teach middle school through high school math up to calculus. But another credential that you might be interested in especially if you're not a fan of calculus, which I find that a lot of students are not, is there's a foundational level math credential. And so this one is sometimes referred to as the middle school math. So maybe you're good at math and you're interested in teaching it, but maybe you don't wanna to go to those higher levels of math like calculus. Your comfort zone lies more in algebra or geometry within that you know, middle school to maybe early high school, this might be the credential for you then to still allow you to teach math, but you don't you know, do calculus or do the high school level math. So something to think about. And this is also something you could add to your multiple subject credential if you're a future elementary school teacher. You could add a foundational level math credential to your multiple subject credential, which is a great way to make yourself more marketable. And with that being said, we also have something like this for science it's called foundational level general science. So when you pursue a full science credential, um, your first part of your subject matter that you're uh, meeting is general science, but then you choose a concentration area like bio or chem or physics. So if you do find a uh, foundational level of general science, you're just doing the general sciences. Um, so kind of like, again, a middle school, science level. So if you love science, but maybe you don't want to take that next step to have a, a concentration area, um, this might be for you. And again, this is something you could add to your multiple subject credential and it's a great way to make yourself more marketable. So um, sometimes these aren't known about by students. So just wanted to point those out to you. And then the bilingual authorization program. So as I mentioned to you, there's a high need for bilingual teachers. And this doesn't mean you'd be teaching that second language that you have. Um, it just means you'd be teaching your content in both English and another language. So it's not ESL or teaching English language. Um, and it's something you would add on to your credential. And 
it's not completed as an undergraduate while you're earning your bachelor's degree. It's completed during the credential program, but it's good to know about early because there's ways to prepare for it. Sometimes um, our bilingual students are pretty confident in their speaking skills, but maybe not so much in their reading or writing skills. And so we can make recommendations to help you be prepared to be proficient in all those areas so that you're ready to do the bilingual authorization program when you're in the credential program. So all things to think about as you're deciding, you know, what path you want to take and, you know, where, where teachers are needed. So now um, I'm going to talk about the basic skills requirement and subject matter knowledge and competency. These are state requirements that you need um, to, to meet to become a teacher in California. The basic skills requirement um, in particular, that's one that you can look into now and see if you've met or um, might be some good encouragement to do well in some classes you're taking right now so that you can meet it. And then subject matter, um, it's, it's just good to know about as preparation for what's ahead. So let's dig into those next. So first, what is the basic skills requirement? So in California, future teachers must demonstrate they are proficient in basic reading, writing, and math. So no matter what you're going to teach, you have to demonstrate you have these basic skills. And so there's a lot of ways to do this, um, but one of the newest ways to do it, because this wasn't always the case, is through college level coursework. Um, so you might've heard of the CBEST before, and up until recently, that was kind of the way that most students were meeting it. Now it can be met with your GE coursework. So that A2, A3, and B4 class that you're gonna be taking, or that you may have already taken, that's your writing, critical thinking, and math GE. If you've earned a B minus or better in these courses, you've automatically met the basic skills requirement. You do not need to take the CBEST. If you haven't taken it some of these courses yet, this is a good incentive to really push for that B minus or better because you'll have one thing checked off your list when you get here. So there's other ways um, to meet it, like qualifying test scores. So if you did the SAT or the ACT, if you have a qualifying score for your um, reading and English or reading and writing section and math section, you can use those too. And they can be used in combination with coursework. So maybe you did that B minus or better for your reading and writing, but math you earned a C, but you got the qualifying SAT score for math. You could use all, all those things in the requirement. So it can be a combination option too. Um, and so I also wanna point out every student will meet it differently. Um, and we can help you figure that out once you get here. Um, so it might look different from how your friend's able to meet it. Um, but yeah, I think, let me see in this next slide, yep. So we have a little kind of cheat sheet here that shows all the ways you can meet the basic skills requirement, including those qualifying scores and the QR codes here too. So if you want to explore this a little bit more, you can scan that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely possible that you will have this met before you even transfer and, and that's great. And if not, we'll help you figure out the ways to do that once you get here. Jennifer, we had a quick question in the chat. Sure. Is this a permanent change moving forward regarding CBEST? Like, is it always going to be like this or? Okay. Yeah, this, and it was uh, from, from the state, not just the CSUF thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're just trying to remove some barriers that were preventing students from becoming teachers, like taking tests and paying for them when they're already doing things to prove their basic skills. So I, it's not going away. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and then for the it. other other counselors on the call too sometimes this gets tricky because it has to be a b or better so if a student gets a c then it doesn't once in a blue moon it's either they take the c best or they retake the course for a higher grade so for critical thinking they can take a different course from that subject area but um yeah it has that's yeah. the tricky part b or better yes we're hoping that's going to change the state has been not willing to budge on that because um, it seems silly that the CSU would allow a C to be um, accepted in those areas, but not for this, but we haven't heard any changes for that coming. So um, so yeah, the CBEST, I, I would say if someone doesn't pass their class, or they pass their class with a C instead of a B, I would do the CBEST instead of retaking the class because it's not college level. Um, it's basic reading. And so um, I think 
I'd rather take the test than spend a whole semester <laughs> on that. And it's not long, it's an hour and a half, 50 multiple choice questions. So I think I might recommend that over doing another course, but also some students are not great at taking tests and they'd rather do that class again and that's totally fine. So, so yeah. Um, but So I will, um, let's see. No, yeah, thank you for sharing. But I've had a couple of students that are like really like anxious about the CBEST test. So that was yeah. the route they went. But it's just there's different ways to cut the cake, like the way you were saying in the last yeah. slide. So it's just it's ways to satisfy it. On. Yeah. But they should at least try it before they decide to take the test. And it's free right now to take both the, the CBEST and the CBEST, the state's waiving test fees. And it's only $30. Thank which is cheaper than taking a course too. So true, of course. <laughs> So good questions. Thank you for asking those. Um, so another state requirement that you have to meet, uh, as I mentioned, is the subject matter knowledge and competency requirement. So what this means is future teachers must demonstrate that they know the subject they plan to teach. And there's um, various ways this can be met. I'm not going to go into them um, too deeply, but um, just know that depending on what you teach, if you earn a degree in the subject you plan to teach, you could automatically meet this requirement to prove you know your subject. So going back to that single subject major recommendation, that's why we want you to major in the subject you plan to teach, because if you do, more than likely you're going to get that requirement met. There's some exceptions, though, so you'll, you'll want to see us. Um, there's course plans you can follow called um, an SMPP or Subject Matter Preparation Programs. And these are state approved classes that you can follow and earn a C or better in to demonstrate your knowledge of the subject and not have to take the CSET. And then there's the CSET exam as well too. Um, when these changes happen, when these options expanded, some people thought CSET and CBUS were going away. They have not, they're still here and there's still an option to meet requirements. It's just, there's more ways to do it now other than exam. And then another option can be through a combination of CSET and completed course plans. So lots of ways to meet it. And then going back to option A, earning a degree in the subject you plan to teach. For those of you who are interested in elementary school, the liberal studies degree is approved to meet this requirement to satisfy subject matter. And our child and adolescent studies major with the elementary school settings concentration there's a course plan you can follow so that you won't have to take the CSET too. So those are, that's why they're really great options if you want to teach uh, elementary and get your multiple subject uh, when you're here at Cal State Fullerton. And again, oh, so this QR code will take you over to our subject matter page, which lays out all these options in greater detail for you. And that's, yeah, that, that concludes the presentation. Um, I had a slide here about my drop-in advising I do for community college students, but my last one ended already for uh, fall, but I still wanted to bring it up to be on the lookout for that. I'll share it with you all. Um, I try and do some drop-in sessions throughout the semester so students who are interested in transferring can ask questions individually. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll start up again with that in the spring, which is in January maybe February, because I like to give students a time to adjust to coming back before I'm sure they're thinking about having advising, but um, be on the lookout for that. And yes, I will share the presentation with you all. So if you've missed anything, you can definitely go back and look at it. But um, if anyone has questions, I'm happy to, to answer anything that maybe I didn't cover or you just want me to expand upon. So can you hear me? I'm so yes, sorry. I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I have tons. I have tons of questions. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay, no, not tons, fine. but I have, no, I have a couple. <laughs> so, um, I guess the first question because I did already apply for your liberal studies. Okay. Uh, uh, so I applied for it. I guess. For, um, when when do y'all start um, sending acceptance letters? And I believe I have roughly I. I guess with Cal State, because I went to Cal State LA a long time ago and I went to another school. Uh -huh. And overall, I have a 3.65 GPA. How strong is that comparatively? No, I think that... I'm um, always worried about that. Yeah, I think that should... That's pretty good. I Like I said, I don't know what the GPA requirement will be. Um, it is... Uh, you're, because you go... You're coming... So you're taking some classes at Rio right now too? 
yeah so this would be my last semester i'm pretty much okay. done with everything um but yeah that would be my just my concern i just yeah. cal state fullerton is kind of the school i want to go to yeah overall so, um because you're not in Orange County, you're considered not one of our local area schools. So the GPA requirement tends to be a little bit higher. But thinking of what it was last year, I don't think it was above a 3.5. So I think your GPA is pretty solid. Um, as far as when they start to let students know their admission status, I think that's going to happen around March, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So it takes a while. You apply really, really early. They try and notify you um, early next year. But a good note to know about uh, for anyone, even you're not applying now, but to just kind of save this information away is you want to make sure you're checking your Cal State Fullerton email and that portal regularly because they're not going to email your personal email to update you on your application status. So you want oh, okay. to do that regularly. Job. Sometimes students are like, I haven't heard anything. And it's because they just, they haven't looked at the Cal State Fullerton email. So when you applied, you got set up with a, a campus wide ID or your CWID, and so you should be able to log into the students in our portal. Um, you'll want to be checking that regularly and making sure you're um, staying on top of any requests that, that you get there, like any videos or to do list items that you might have. Okay. Um, I guess question two would be so I am I am I am older than probably most. Um, and so I'm starting to become a, I'm starting this journey right now. Mm -hmm. And um, full um, Rio Hondo has been really amazing with the amount of online resources and classes they've actually have. Um, being that I'm nine to five um, with my job right now, um, how how is Cal State Fullerton with online classes? Do they have some, a, a lot, very little? Like, how does it? Yeah. How does that look like? So most of our classes are in person. There's going to be some online options. I'm not sure how many are available for the liberal studies degree um, okay. and as far as evening classes, but they, they do exist. We, we had a moment where we were, we had kind of a high percentage as we were transitioning back from COVID, but I think we're back to like kind of pre-COVID times where a majority of our classes are in person, but there's online options, there's evening options, but um, maybe not as great as those in-person engagement. Okay okay and then when it comes to you brought up something amazing i took a picture of it i mean the fundamental level math potential because yeah, i do yeah. i do want to become a math teacher that was kind of that's been my goal my my main goal is to become a math professor okay. but obviously I, I know you need years of teaching first and your master's but you know i want to be able to pay off my bachelor's before i get my master's sure, yeah. um so when it comes to that, how does that work? Because I do want to teach while I'm while I'm working on masters. I do want to teach middle school math. So how does that work? Is that credential? Does that happen as I'm getting my BA, or is that something different? It's a post program. To... Yeah. So it's a what? It's a post back program. So you would be pursuing your single subject in foundational oh. level math. It'd be a year long program you complete after your bachelor's degree. If you wanted to oh, okay. in awesome. your multiple subject and complete and add that on you, you could do that too but you can also just pursue the single subject for foundation foundation level math on its own okay yeah because i'm in a particular situation because so because i want to get started as soon as possible so the liberal 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 arts is probably the easier one of the two with the math but i do want to pursue math moving forward mm -hmm. so um so it would be something added on after i get my liberal arts major to be able to teach math at the middle school. Are you school thinking level. about teaching elementary school too, or just math? Honestly, I honestly just wanted. I want to teach math. The, okay. To be honest, so that's so kind of what I want to do. The bachelor's degree program is separate from the credential program. You have to complete the bachelor's degree, and while you're working on your okay. bachelor's degree, there's teacher preparation requirements you need to fulfill so that you're ready to apply for the credential program. Okay, so recommendation would be okay. So recommendation again, math. So, so to transfer as a math major as opposed to the liberal arts. Yeah, if you you don't have to, you can do liberal art, uh, liberal studies, but it, that one is okay. for those who want to teach elementary. Okay. Yeah. I think that was it. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. Those questions. Those are all great questions. Um, and in the chat. 
uh, Troy has a question about urban studies. And so um, we have the urban learning major. It's our first major for the College of Ed. because um, all of, Like I said, there's not a teaching or an education major. And the College of Ed is finally getting their own their own undergraduate degree and it's called urban learning um, and it launches fall 24 but for our first cohorts we're not accepting transfer students it's just going to be for first grade freshmen perfect anthony sorry i had one more sorry question meet yourself sorry. it's okay <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Um, good. when it when it when it comes to i guess probably what everybody kind of asks um, when it comes to the price for two years and the uh, positions for, um, I guess, Hispanic, like, scholarships and scholarships when it comes to, you know, um, men trying to become teachers, is that something that we can find through your website or through Cal State Fullerton's website? Did you say scholarships? Uh, when, it comes, when it comes to scholarships and then oh. just the overall price for two years at Cal State Fullerton. Fullerton. Yeah, so there's definitely opportunities for financial aid. Um, and then there's College of Ed scholarships too, but those scholarships will be not for your undergraduate program. It will be for when you're in the credential program. So around the time that you apply for the credential program, you'd want to apply for those scholarships to get aid for the credential program. Um, but as far as other uh, scholarships for your undergraduate degree, I don't, I'm not too familiar with those. Um, you'd have to check in with the financial aid department, but as a teacher teacher into the credential for going into the credential program, there's definitely going to be opportunities and there's scholarships specifically for men of color. Awesome. Um, anything else? Any more questions, anybody? You could chat them and I'll read them to her. I think, um, well, I'll leave that, but um, when Anthony asked was really, uh, that's a very common counselor question, Jennifer, is that students always ask um, when we talk about transfer, they may be working part time or even full time. But it sounds like for classes at Cal State Fullerton, everything is kind of like during the day, uh, not so much evening courses, not so much yeah. um, online courses, correct? Yeah, I mean, they're, okay. still, they're there, but I wouldn't count on it for every class that you have for your major. Like liberal studies isn't a fully online, like we only have a few, I think, that are fully on online. Mm -hmm. Everything is in person. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, so I'm from the Center for Careers and Teaching. So you'll have a major department. And so you can reach out to them and ask them those questions because they can tell you, like, there's certain classes that are going to have to be done in person or during the day. They're the ones that, you know, create these schedules and know historically how they offer them. But yeah, there's it's mostly in person. And I'll say we're definitely doing it here with the parking. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> Because it's very in person, um, but there's still online that exists. But like I said, don't count on it to be for every single class. And I will add for the credential program, mm -hmm. it's very much a full time um, program. So then, like I mentioned, it's a year long, but you're kind of doing a full time job in the credential program because you're student teaching during the day and then the coursework is in the afternoons and evenings for the program. So it doesn't leave a lot of room for working during the day, especially because that's when we student teaching was schools and sessions. So those are all things to kind of think about and maybe start planning for um, for the credential program. Perfect, thank you. And then we had one last question in the chat. Uh, does the program provide a segue to the post-bachelorate, like a plus one year, two year immediately after the, for credential? So it is it, it any credential. So whether you're in single subject, multiple subject, mm -hmm. or special education, it's a post bac program. It takes two years if you're doing fifteen units a semester, thirty units in a year to complete your bachelor's degree once you transfer. So if you're on track to complete your degree in two years after you graduate, if you apply, usually during your senior year is when you'll be applying if you want to start that semester after you graduate. Most students want to do that. And so um, we sometimes call the credential program your fifth year, because in total, it should take you typically four years to earn your bachelor's degree, and then you do that additional year for your credential. So um, most of our programs, you have the option to start the program in either fall or the spring. 
Some subjects don't have a spring start date. You'll have to wait till the fall. Um, but it's likely that no matter when you graduate, you should be able to start that following term if you get everything done to be ready to apply. It's very similar to the transfer process in that you apply months in advance to be in the credential program. So um, generally speaking, your senior year will be the time you're applying to the credential program if you want to start right after you graduate. Thank you. And then the follow-up question to that was, is there a program or a dual master's credential program? Yes, but only for multiple subjects. That's so we have a multiple subject combined program where you can earn your master's in ed with a um, concentration or emphasis in curriculum and instruction. And it's a 16 month long program that includes the summer, um, but we don't have that for single subject or spec. Multiple subject is the only one that has the combined option and it only has an option to start in the fall if you do that program. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions, everybody? All right. I guess that's everything. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I, I felt like we hit you hot and heavy with the questions at the end. No, that's okay. Those are <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you had some of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Um, and then that makes me think, oh, there's some, some things that I should yeah. add to the presentation too. So, but yeah, um, thank you for having me and I'll send you the slides shortly so you can share them. Perfect. Thank you. Everyone who's on this call, I'll send you the slides as well after for your review. But thank you, everybody. And thank you so much, Jennifer, for your time. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, everyone.